Restless fans, we're going to try something a little bit different with this recap. I'm not just going to give a story by storyline review. I'm going to give my thoughts as if this was our weekly recap. So we're going to stay tuned for that. So Nick finds out Sally's pregnant. Um, Chance is pretty much done with Junior City elites. And Jack and Diane, we get to see them make love at the end of the episode. So... Formal introduction. Welcome back to CBS Soap Dish Recap, where we recap everything CBS Soaps, both the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful. This is the young and the restless recap for January 20th. And without any further ado, let's rant about this episode. So we see Sally is pretty much feeling it this episode because that morning sickness is kicking her in the but Chloe tried to bring over some remedies, tried to help her get through all of this. Of course, Nick shows up as usual. And even though Chloe tried to keep him from coming in, Nick, he came in anyway. So, of course, he's kind of putting two to two together. She wasn't drinking. She's been sick for the last two weeks or so, or maybe more. And she's been dodging and tipping and trying to kick him out and all this sort kind of stuff. So Nick is like, okay, what the French toast is going on? And she tried to dance around it. But once she realized her goose is cooked, she had to pretty much tell him the truth. Now, here's my thing. When Nick says, well, why you didn't tell me? She should have just told him because I'm really not sure who the father is. Because... If it was Nick, she would more than, man, she would have more than been happy to go and run and tell Nick that he was the father. I, I don't even doubt that. But because she knows that her last period was way back in November, November 14th to be exact, and she had sex with Adam December 5th plus Nick in the same week, she don't know who that baby daddy is. So, of course, that's why she did not say anything. And she knows that. And, and I mean, he's being supportive and whatnot. And I'm wondering if he's he's going to hang in there. But what if it is Adams? And we know that storylines on the soaps have the way of revealing itself when there is a turn. And the only turn that could really blow this thing out of the water is his retinitis pigmentosa that Adam had his mom had and it is genetic connor had it which is why he had delia's corneas so yeah they got to figure this out but we got to see what happens so now we had this other thing that's brewing between chance and sharon and honestly i kind of sort of warming up to these two at first i was like forget about it but they're having a lot of fun together, which I'm surprised. And I got to give it to the writers for kind of livening the two of them up because they really was joking around, especially since Chance is trying to figure out what to do next. He's getting sick and tired of GC residents using his badge as a way to get under the radar with crimes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But the thing is, is that the chemistry between these two are slowly, slowly vibing. And I honestly think that, and I hate to say it, Sharon might see Chance as possibly a Ray replacement. Because, of course, he's that leader and, you know, that officer and just like Ray was. Now, I'm not saying that he's a 100% replacement, but some of the things that she liked about Ray, she see in Chance. And especially since he wants to be, you know, the, the stand up guy and, you know, try to get away from all of the other stuff that other residents do. However, it is interesting that I, I do like the fact that Sharon held herself accountable in this episode because she didn't look down her nose at other people. She was like, look, I done did some things in my past, too, that I can't throw stones at other people for. And that kind of put a little bit of something on Chance's mind because, you know, I guess in that moment she thought he sounded a little self, uh, self-righteous. But... You know, I find that pretty darn interesting. And I'm kind of liking the chemistry between those two. So we got to see how that will, you know, progress as that storyline continues. So let's all go over to the Abbott house. Diane and Jack is feeling themselves because of the fact that they think that they've finished the perfect plan against Jeremy Stark. And as much as Kyle and especially Summer 
Summer, Summer, Summer is not feeling this. And she was like, you guys committed crimes to get what you want. And it's like, girl, you stole a married man's car to get what you want. And we can't talk about other, all of the other stuff that you've done. Just because it's a different summer doesn't mean that your history from the storylines just magically disappear. No, it does not. So don't look so self-righteous right now, Miss Summer. Because you ain't that far from the tree. As they say, the apple don't fall from the tree. Your mama. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, Kyle, on the other hand, as much as he's happy about the fact that he thinks this whole thing is over, he still has a little bit of reservation that it might not quite be over. And so I think that's the biggest thing. And then it gets worse when Nikki shows up. She gets there because Jack has called her there. This is all part of his plan to finalize and put the icing on the cake of this whole thing that he and Diane plotted against Jeremy Stark. Now, little does they know, remember, Phyllis showed that same video of Jeremy and Diane cozying up at the glam club. She also showed it to Nikki. Nikki knows what's up too. So, of course, she's trying to put two and two together. Why would he go to Chicago? Why would he choose us? The last time we changed the alarm was when you and Jack were there. All of that. She remembers. She ain't stupid. Remember, she's Victor Newman's wife. So, yeah. I mean, just like Summer don't fall that far from the, tru from the tree, I should say. In regards to Nikki, yeah, well, look at the association and the company that she keep with her husband. Anyway, she was putting two and two together, and it looked like they want pins and needles, meaning Diane and Jack. And then Chance showed up. So with Chance being the super sleuth that he is, one thing about Chance, this doesn't sit right with him. This is just a little bit too perfect for him, and I could see why. I'm like, Jack, really? You thought that this was just going to just ride under the radar, but and you just throw something at the wall and it's going to stick. Anyway, it didn't sit well with Chance, especially because it was too perfect with Jeremy supposedly leaving his reading glasses near the safe. And then he only stole the necklace, nothing else. And then how did he get in there without breaking in? And how would he know to break the alarm or the code or whatever? Plus, hey, we already know what Nikki knows, right? So one thing that was pretty interesting because of the fact that we all know about the whole Ashland Lock thing and Chance pretty much gave them a free pass on that one. And it looked like this is going to be the situation with Jeremy Stark, Diane, and Jack. It's one thing that Chance made a statement about people who try to be a little bit too self-righteous when they point their fingers at other people's bad behaviors. Check it out. Mr. Stark is still very loudly proclaiming his innocence. No, he is anything but innocent. He is a convicted criminal that can't be trusted. You know, unlike the upstanding citizens of Genoa City who always play by the rules. Well, I need to be kind. <laughs> I bet you do, Nikki. You need to slide right on out the door because you know what happened with the Ashland Lock situation and all of the other things that not only Chance overlooked, but Paul too back in the day. So yeah, see you later. Don't let the door hit you. So while Nikki is hightailing it out of the Abbott Mansion, over at Jabot, her husband is there, Victor Newman. And of course, his dear old son, Adam, ran into him over there. And it's like, Pops, what are you doing here? What do you want? Now, he claimed he's looking for Kyle. Now, we all know what the deal is. And, of course, Adam caught Victor and Kyle over at society colluding, right? And we know that Victor's trying to cook up this harebrained scheme to figure out a way to get Kyle to help him get kicked out of Jabot so he can crawl back to Newman. Well, that's no exception here. However, Victor making it look like, oh, I'm just trying to talk to Kyle about my grandson and, you know, he's going to be an adult Newman one day. And I'm like, well, as long as Summer and Kyle stay together, I guess it could be, you know, a mentor if that's the case, if they don't. Anywho, lies, lies, and more lies. And of course, Adam can see clean through Victor. 
Kyle and Summer show up as they definitely ran out of that Jabot house because they didn't want to be a part of looking Nikki in the face, knowing exactly what the truth is. However, they get over there, they see Adam, they see Victor, and of course, Kyle make up some fake story that Summer actually co-signed talking about Valentine's Day. Now, they're stupid because... Victor said he was there about Harrison, and now Kyle and Summer said that Victor was there about Valentine's Day. So they made themselves look like idiots. Anyway, back to the story at hand. Summer is trying to make it look like, oh, you're going to screw up all by yourself. The dude has been there practically half a year so far, and so far so good. Yeah, I don't think that that's the case. And really, you don't have anything to talk about, especially since your mom just got fired. Speaking of Victor Newman and all his entitlement and glory, he decides that he wants to get pissed off at Kyle for not returning his calls over the last two to three days. And I'm like, really, dude? This man has a wife, a son, and a company to run, and a crazy mom who was dealing with a criminal. And yeah, okay, everything revolves around you. Back to the story at hand. He then turns around and says to Kyle, why did you even set your mom back into your life in the first place? And of course, Kyle didn't want to hear that. I don't blame him. It's his mama, no matter what anybody else think. Then Victor turns around and say, well, that shows how you value family. And I'm like, really? He really flipped that one, didn't he? So then he says, well, this is why I'm here. Since we value family, I need Adam back into my family. Even though Adam don't want to be over there and he has peace of mind, Kyle don't want him over at Jabot, so he wants his peace of mind as well. So they're trying to hatch up this plan where he gets kicked out. And then, of course, some job is going to be offered by Victor as a way to pick him up off his feet. And they want him to have an epic fail at Jabot. Why don't they just leave that man alone and let him live? Little do Adam know that he possibly is a father of another child. So, Victor, why don't you just mind your business and stay out of your kids' lives? And finally, you see this scene right here? This is probably what Diane ultimately wanted. Now, I know we went through everything from L.A. to Allie to being in a relationship back with her son. And, of course, all of the shenanigans that happened with uh, the reporter and Jeremy Stark. And, of course, we end up here. So it looks like in this particular situation, whatever the adrenaline rush that they both got from thinking that they won, we stand on top and we did this together and we defeated the foe, Jeremy Stark. He is put away for good. Obviously, it was a turn on for the two of them because it ended them straight in the bedroom. So we know it's been a while for Jack as the last person that he actually was intimate with was Carrie. Remember Carrie, the girl that was injecting herself to help her fertilization along so she was getting ready to freeze her eggs? That was in 2019. This is 23. So it's been almost four years. So I know it was pretty inviting when Diane pretty much gave him the attention that he needed. And of course, he obliged because we really got to see the whole bedroom scene with both Diane and Jack. So let me know what you guys think.
Okay, so there you have it. The Young and the Restless rant recap for Friday, January 20th, 2023. Stay tuned for a rant recap for the bold and the beautiful also for today. So until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.